friends and welcome to our midweek reflection here at the Middleton Mouse. We're going, we were having so many different locations, aren't we, as we meet together? Um, usually I'm in the garden. It is a beautiful day, but everybody else is in the garden. They're, they're shouting and, and what so. I, I couldn't uh, record from the garden today. So uh, here we are in the study. On Sunday, we looked at... Um, what it meant to be a follower of Jesus. We, we thought about um, the cost of discipleship and how, how that um, impacts our lives and our ability to follow Jesus. We thought about death to self and actually what that means for each and every one of us, knowing that unless we give up everything, we can't even consider becoming a disciple of Jesus. And some of those words were very hard, And some of those words were very challenging. So what I want to do for the next couple of weeks, two or three weeks, see how the Lord leads. But stay on this this theme of discipleship. And I want to ramp up this week by looking at discipleship and obedience. Now, if we look at a definition of obedience, we would see that it says this. Compliance with an order, request or law or submission to another's authority. Now, so often we associate obedience with orders. You know where I'm going with this, those who know me. Being a former military chaplain, I I understand that context. I understand what it is to receive an order and just to carry it out, trusting that whoever gives the order knows the bigger picture, wants to deliver the intent of the commanders, and that it is vital that I do my bit in order to carry out that intent. That's how the army operates, and I understand and I get that. But so often, well, the, the very word obedience can suggest to us um, that we are subservient in some way, and that those who are demanding that we obey them are um, above us in some way. Now, that's very difficult. That's a difficult concept when it comes to discipleship, because I don't think that's what God is after at all. In fact, when we look at discipleship, even in our current in our current situation, when we look at obedience, being in lockdown with the coronavirus, hopefully we're all being obedient in staying indoors and um, observing the restrictions placed on us by the government. Um, So that's the hope. But one could say that we're all being obedient. But when we talk about obedience, you know, it's not as simple or as straightforward as we would think. There are many dynamics surrounding and choices surrounding our obedience or our being compliant to a particular thing, situation or order. I want to just unpack this today as um, a ramp up, a slip road onto the motorway of worship on Sunday. Do you like that? So we're just going to go on the slip road. I'm just going to unpack this and just a bit of an aperitif um, to the main meal on Sunday. So we're going to Mark's Gospel. If you've got your Bible with you, turn to Mark's Gospel, chapter 10, and we're reading from verse 17 to 27. Mark's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 17 27. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony, you shall not defraud, honour your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go and sell everything. Go and sell everything you have and give it to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At this, the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words, but Jesus said again, Children, 
how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were even more amazed and said to each other, who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. The rich young ruler, when challenged by Jesus to give his riches to the poor, leave all and follow him, presented the young man with a very simple decision. Obey or disobey. And it, what I want to suggest to you is that our ability to choose whether we obey or disobey seems to depend on the bigger yes. That's why I said there's so many dynamics in any given moment that determines our choice. And I say choice because I firmly believe that our ability to choose determines whether we obey or disobey. But it depends on the bigger yes. What am I giving myself to? And like obedience, the bigger yes is dependent on the many changing dynamics in any given moment. So it then becomes not just one uh, one off decision that I've made, but a continuing choice. OK, that's really important. A continuing choice that is determined by the weight I put on my bigger yes. What do I mean? Let's go back to COVID-19. Let's go back to the coronavirus. We are obeying. We are choosing to obey. Why? Because the bigger yes is about staying at home in order to protect the NHS, to protect our frontline workers and to save lives. That's the bigger yes. So in order to achieve the bigger yes, we need to obey the order or the request that is given to us. And so that becomes our motive for obedience. Let me give another example. Every day, let's say, I get up for work. Maybe I don't like my job, but I've been doing it for the past 20 years. Clearly, my work, my job, is not my bigger yes. So what is? What gets me out of bed on a morning? Well, maybe the bigger yes is to provide for my family. Maybe I enjoy what the benefits bring of work, of providing an income to my family. It gives my family choices. Um, it, it, it provides for us. It means that we've got a roof over our heads and food on our table. So here in this example, the job is not the bigger yes, but the providing and the provision for the family becomes the bigger yes. So what do I do in order to... Choose the bigger yes, I obey getting out of bed on a morning, going and doing a job that maybe I don't particularly like in order to provide, in order to achieve that bigger yes. Friend, we're all obeying something or someone. We're all saying yes to something. We're all giving ourselves to something. Obedience, whether we are conscious of it or not, is playing a huge part in how we um, form our lives, in, in the direction that our lives take. I want to ask you a question. What made Jesus the bigger yes to those who followed him? What was it about Jesus that when he said to Matthew, follow me, when he said to Peter, follow me, James and John, follow me. In, in fact, all the disciples, what was it about Jesus that suddenly in that moment made him their bigger yes? Because when we reflect on what the ripple effects of following Jesus meant was, they meant they left businesses, they left potential, they left position, they left prestige, they left families, they left businesses, all in a moment to follow Jesus. Not knowing where they'd spend the night, um, how they were going to provide for their families, how they were going to provide for themselves. They didn't really know what that meant, but there was something inside them that made Jesus in that moment the bigger yes in order for them to follow. That's a really powerful question. Clearly for the rich young ruler following Jesus, though desirable, and I honestly believe that he was sincere in his request to follow Jesus. 
meant that his bigger yes was his wealth and not actually following Christ. The payment, the cost of following Jesus was just too big for him to pay. As we journey towards Sunday, I want to ask you this question. What is it that makes Jesus your bigger yes? Is Jesus your yes? If so, is there a point where Jesus stops being your bigger yes and the obedience that you gave to him suddenly stops? Your yes becomes a no and your obedience suddenly becomes disobedience. My question is, if Jesus is your bigger yes, at what point does that balance tip? What is the price that would be just too costly for us to pay in order to follow Jesus? When we read the Gospels, we see that many disciples stopped following Jesus when they got to that tipping point, when it became too costly for them to carry on. And they left Jesus in their droves, so much so that he said to Peter, do you want to leave also? And Peter says, where shall we go? Only you have the words to have eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the son of God. But before that, people were just leaving Jesus, stop being his disciples, stop following him because the cost got too great. And the obedience that they showed to Jesus suddenly stopped and the yes became a no. We need to remember, friends, that there were only 120 gathered in that room on Pentecost and multitudes followed Jesus and were his disciples. So you can see that many stopped following Jesus at some point when the cost got too great. On Sunday, we will unpack this a little bit further, looking at how our response to the call of Jesus is defined not by what we take up, but actually about what we let go or what we release. And so suddenly obedience becomes a call to love and love is a call to freedom and freedom is a call to life. And so obedience brings life. That's what we'll be unpacking on Sunday. So let, let us pray before we leave one another on this Wednesday morning. Loving God, I do pray for each and every person who is tuning in and following this sermon series on discipleship, how we die to ourselves, how we hear the word of God and the call of Jesus to follow, but what the impact is on our very lives and what it demands of us. Lord, I pray that we will have ears to hear what your spirit is saying to us and that, Lord, your Holy Spirit will guide us in our thoughts and our reflections, in our quiet times, in our prayers, in our times with you, where we can come closer. Father God, I pray and honestly believe that a call to, a, to discipleship does mean death to self. A call to discipleship does mean obedience, but that that death to self brings life. And the obedience doesn't bring bondage, but it brings liberty and freedom. And so that call to freedom is really a call to love and relationship. Jesus be with us now. And we do pray all our prayers in and through your mighty name. Amen. Saints of God, God bless you and God bless you real good. <laughs>